Welcome to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched. Go Live TV, anytime, anywhere. Praise God, we give God another praise. He deserves our praise all the time. And we welcome you once again to another episode of Word Impact. Hallelujah. Today we shall conclude where we left off the other time on the topic, Love Your Neighbor. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. We pray, O oh God, that you will. Speak to our hearts, speak to our lives, speak to our relationships. Speak, God Almighty, for we hear you, O oh God. And we pray, Father, that as we go through your word today, you will bring light unto us and it will grant us understanding. Thank you, Father, for you are forever faithful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Love your neighbor, part two. In part one, we mentioned that uh, it's important uh, to visit the golden rule again because the first uh, episode of Love Your Neighbor was uh, during the week of love and uh, family celebration. We call that uh, the uh, uh, Valentine week. And we took our scriptures from Matthew 22. We will still take that scripture again. Matthew 22, we'll take from verse uh, 35. Uh, let me just take from 37 this time, from verse 37 to verse 40. I'll read from the New King James Version. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we were dealing with love your neighbor as thyself. We will see here that um, to really love your neighbor, you need to know how to love thyself. <laughs> Praise God. So our focal uh, point here is love thyself. And how do you Love thyself. What is self-love? We have said self-love is a state of appreciating who you are. Self-love is not selfishness. Like some people will say, well, I love myself, so I take this, I take that, because I love myself. Above others, that is not self-love. That is greed. That is covetousness. But self-love is appreciating who you are. Then the question comes, do you know who you are? And that brought us to the uh, six pillars of, or we say pillars of self-love. We dealt with number one, which is know who you are. And number two, which is accept who you are. So I will not be going into details on those because we dealt with that already in the first ep episode. So if you have not listened to it, please do. So number three point under the pillars of self-love is engage self-improvement. Engage self-improvement. Self-improvement here includes character development, skill development, and healthy lifestyle. Because if you really love yourself, you want to see that you self-improve. Character development here, we are talking of more about self-awareness. You need to be aware of uh, your character, your uh, character and personality traits. Maybe you could even uh, go do some 
uh, personality test to find out if you are an extrovert or an introvert and um, to know uh, other dimensions about yourself because self-awareness helps in, helps in you getting to in, getting, uh, in terms with the factors that are at work in your life and personality and now that we uh, now that we relate or how that we interplay with other people. This is very important. And uh, for scriptures here, I will take Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 13. Ephesians 4, 13 here, the Bible was saying, um, I can do, if we have it, we can put it up, please. Ephesians 4, 13. He said, I can do all things, Okay, okay, so, sorry, I, uh, I, put, I put another one. Uh, so, Ephesians 4.13, he said, Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That is, like we said before, we are human beings. We are human beings becoming we are in the process of becoming. So, uh, uh, loving yourself is engaging self-improvement. You want to engage self-improvement. You want to look into character development. How can I be better in, 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 in relating? How can I be better even in dealing with myself, in dealing with my with, um, mood? Some people have mood. Some people have temperament. Whatever that is, you want to see that you are dealing with that and you are improving uh, and then uh, involved in uh, self-development is skill development. Skill development. You can update yourself. If you need to learn some computer skills, you can learn some computer skills. If you need to go back to school to learn certain trades, certain skills that could improve your lot in life, please go ahead and do skills development. If you need to learn a trade, learn a trade. Every time I go, I take my car to the uh, garage. I, 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 I have this thing in my mind. How I wish, how I wish I knew how to fix this car. I could have just fixed it myself. <laughs> you know, but you can't do all, uh, everything. Yeah, you can't learn all the skills. That's what I mean. But some skills are useful. At least just to be able to change your own oil. Probably you would need, uh, uh, you would need a ram. A, a ramp that could lift the vehicle up and then you could change your own hall or something like that. Learn something. It could be a little carpentry work. It could be just learn some skills, especially if it's a skill that builds up on your career so you can be better at your career. You can be better at what you do. So all this coming to self-improvement. See that you are updating yourself, if not on daily basis, on weekly basis. Read. Read. Learn from people. <laughs> Someone said now that uh, there's hardly anything you want to get introduction on that you cannot find on YouTube. Introduction to cooking. Introduction to whatever. So update yourself. Skills development. And if you need to go for training, two weeks training, three weeks training, please go ahead. So that is part of loving yourself. And, uh, 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 and on that... Uh, involving self-improvement is healthy lifestyle. As you, as you engage character improvement, as you engage skill, de character development, skill development, engage body development too. Body development does not mean you build muscle. Just be healthy. You could walk six, six steps. I mean, 6,000 steps a day. 8,000 steps a day. 10,000 steps a day. Because healthy lifestyle, you see, this is the only body we have. And the Bible says it's the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost needs this body to live in. So we have to keep it healthy. So to keep your body healthy, you need to make sure that you sleep, you sleep well, not like oversleep. Six hours of sleep, six to seven hours of sleep. It's okay. Some people say eight, that's luxury for some of us. But you see, it's the quality of sleep that matters. If you, if you can get four hours, three and a half to four hours uninterrupted, that is full cycle of sleep. 
So if you get two hours after, on top of it, that's good. But most people don't even get full cycle of sleep. They go to bed at 10 o'clock, they wake up at 6 o'clock, they think they got eight hours of sleep, but they woke up three times. No, you didn't get eight hours of sleep. Because the way we sleep cycle is this, if it does not complete the first three and a half to four hours, let's say you wake up after two hours, the sleep cycle goes back to zero. So it's not when you go back to bed, you are not starting off at two and a half hours. No, you are starting from zero. Your sleep cycle starts from zero. So if you wake up another two hours, the sleep cycle goes back to zero. So if you do three or four of that, you wake up tired. You think you have slept eight hours. No, you only slept two and a half hours worth of sleep, quality sleep. So watch your sleep pattern and watch what you eat. Don't be in the habit of eating the food that does not, that does not uh, support healthy lifestyle. You know what those foods are. SS fat, SS, anything SS is not good for you. And of course, when you get to a certain age, there are some food you want to cut down drastically, especially carbs. You want to cut down on carbs drastically. See, you can talk to a nutritionist about that. That is part of self-love. I've listened to some people. They say, oh, I'm doing self-love. I'm going to take this box of chocolate today. It's only the chocolate company that wants to make money off you. That's not self-love. A box of chocolate in one night, that is not self-love. No. Self-love is in doing everything in moderation and know what works well for your body. The day I discovered that uh, if I don't eat, if I don't eat uh, uh, bread and dairy, I can drop 10, 10 pounds in, uh, in two weeks. Then it became, my, it became one of my uh, things. If I discover that I need to drop 10 pounds, I just cut off bread, I cut off dairy for two, three weeks. You see, no drive. It works for my body. It may not work for somebody else's body. Find out what works for you. Praise God. And then um, in healthy lifestyle is motion. I've talked about motion. Exercise does not mean you have to get gym membership. Just walk around. Take nice evening walk. Life is a series of motion. Make sure you are not just sitting down for too long. Sedimentary lifestyle, they call it. No, move. Do something. Move, move your body, let the blood flow. And as you do so, you burn SS fat and SS this and that. And of course, do your annual medical. What are we saying? All this coming to self love because if you are not taking good care of your body, I don't mean we all have to have six packs, eight packs. I don't have any pack. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just good enough for God to use. Amen. <laughs> and healthy. I'm happy with myself. Hallelujah. Okay, that is how it's supposed to be. All right. So, I engage self-improvement. Number one, character development. Number two, skill development. Number three, healthy lifestyle. Watch what you drink. Watch your mental uh, health state too. Don't, don't. Don't let the issues of this world or issues of relationship or issues of um, uh, whatever the issue you are dealing with, don't let it get into you to drive you into depression. No. Avoid every sad effect. It's not worth it at the end of the day. Because God has not given us the spirit of timidity, the Bible says, but it's given us the spirit of power, it's love, and sound mind. Maintain your sound mind all the time. You need your sound mind to function every time. Amen. So watch your mental state. No matter what you are going through, don't let it put your mind or don't let it put you under regardless of betrayal regardless of disappointment regardless of regardless of whatever just make sure that uh, you keep looking up just like the psalmist it says i look up to the hills from where comes my help my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth don't let anything drive you into depression it is not a place you want to be. So part of self-love, like I've said, engage self-improvement. 
character development, skill development, and healthy lifestyle. Number four, because I want to finish this today, I don't want to come back to it. I may move faster now on the other uh, pillars of self-love. Number four will be establish life principles and boundaries. Establish life principles and boundaries. Um, when I'm talking of life principles there, the life principle has to, has to uh, incorporate your values and your personal conviction. Values of honesty. Values of, uh, of loyalty. Values of, uh, 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 of integrity. You want to make sure that uh, these are areas you watch out for now and again. Okay? And then uh, uh, personal conventions, you know, it's, it's good you, we read the scriptures. Uh, it's good we say what the Bible says, but whatever the Bible says does not work for you. Listen to me. Does not work for you until you make it your word. I will repeat that. The word of God, as good as the word of God is and his promises, it does not work for you until you make that word your own word. That is why the Bible, God wants us to read the Bible, read the word, hear the word. It says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. That is when you hear the word, the word now you will obtain personal conviction. You are not doing what the Bible says just because the Bible says it, but because you have been able to come to agree with the Bible. You know what? You believe yourself more than you believe anybody else, even including God. God knows that. I will say it again. You believe yourself more than you believe anybody else or not, including God in heaven. That's why God wants you to make his word your word. Because he knows that once you are able to make his word your word, you will believe it. Hallelujah. I don't have time to dig deep on that. Because I want to finish up like I said. So, have personal convictions on issues of life. Have personal convictions on, on let's say, on how to deal with... Uh, uh, maybe marital issue. Have personal convictions on maybe how to deal with issue of, uh, of fidelity. Have personal conviction on how to deal with issues that has to do with money. Have personal convictions on issues that has to do with uh, 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 ethical issues, example. And when you go to ethical issues, you want to have some non-negotiables. Nobody, you cannot negotiate that with anybody. Even you can negotiate it with yourself. Because you have come to, to have that conviction and you have come into agreement between yourself and God on certain matters. Amen. It might be difficult to put a hand right now on any of these. But for instance, when you are getting into marriage, you want to have that personal conviction that you will make it work. Whatever it takes for you, you will make it work. That is an example. There are a lot of uh, uh, divorces and separation these days. Uh, we are not blaming anybody because at times it's very complicated. But along the line, if you have that personal conviction that no matter what it takes on my own part, I will make it work, you will discover that it will be very hard, very difficult for that marriage to break. I know there are situations that are, you know what, you don't want anybody's life to be at risk. I understand that. But again, again, there are some areas of life you have personal conviction. Part of personal conviction is, is ethical issue, moral issue. You have personal conviction. You know? Not because you want to be faithful to your, to your, to your spouse. Not because, because of her or him per se, but You've had that conviction and you've, you've, you've made that covenant with God between yourself and God. Like Job said, I've covenanted with my high. I will not look at the damn cell. 
you come to personal conviction on certain things, worshiping God, serving God, you come to personal conviction on it, nobody, you don't need anybody to remind you again what to do. Because you've come to terms with yourself and with God that you will serve him, you will worship him, you know, you will read your scriptures. It has become part of your life and you will take the word of God, you will put it to practice and as the Holy Spirit grants you grace, you keep charging forward until you see him face to face. Such people are not the kind of people some prophets will derail anyhow. Because they had personal conviction. And when you are a person with personal conviction, even when God is saying something through somebody, it has to, he has to confirm it with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, we live at a time and age when, when there is so much fluff. So much fluff in the name of ministry have some personal conviction on matters of scripture. Have some personal conviction on matters of life and living. You don't have to, you don't have to, to, to do what the rest of the world are doing. Make believe. No. Be authentic. Be the real you. At all times. And you don't need to apologize for that. I haven't said that. There are ways and areas you can improve. But be the authentic you at all times. Praise God. See? And that's where you could set boundaries. Some people are into problems in relationship and in life generally because there are no boundaries. There should be boundaries. Even between you and your children, there should be, as much as you love them, there should be boundaries, especially the adult children. And even... Even they are small children. I've seen a boy of 10 slap the mom. A boy of 10 slapped the mom. And the mom was like, oh, well, it's his boy. I said, no, that is wrong. It's not just a boy. If he's slapping you at 10, let me tell you, by the time he's 20, he will beat you up. Don't. Don't allow that. Or, or use, use, use foul language on the parents. Because the boy, the boy didn't get what he wanted at that time. Now, that is the time you have to draw the line. Who is the parent here? And who is the adult? See, there are some non-negotiables. I just use that as an example. It goes around in the area, several areas of life. So, that is part of loving yourself. Establish life principles and boundaries. Even when you are in love with someone, that is not to say they should walk over you. Even when you're in a relationship, any kind of relationship, business relationship, uh, life relationship, career, whatever, mm -mm, that is not to say they should walk over you. As much as you want to be gentle, as much as you want to be uh, gentle as the dove, you want to be as wise as serpent, and let there be boundaries. Very important. So, establish life principles and boundaries. And then uh, Psalm 119 for scripture, Psalm 119, 9 to 11. What does it say, please? How can a young man, a young person, stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So that is establishing life principles and boundaries. That's number four of loving yourself. And number five, Commit to becoming a better version of yourself. Commit to becoming a better version of yourself. You know, while I was talking about establishing life boundaries, I remember Joshua 24. <laughs> Joshua had to draw the line when he was talking to the people of Israel. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You, you, you guys, choose this day who you will serve. So for Christian parents, let your children know where you are. Where you are standing. It's not a day of Sunday that you sit down and watch football. No, you want to worship God. It's a day of worship. Because they know where your heart is at the end of the day. Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Okay, I just saw that I have that scripture passage, but I didn't put it up. It's okay. So, now number five. Commit to becoming a better version of yourself. Let's have Proverbs 4, 18. 
Proverbs 4.18. It says, The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. So you can become a better version of yourself. You've come to terms with yourself now, who you are, and then accept who you are. You engage self-improvement. You establish life principles and boundaries. Then you want to commit to becoming a better version of yourself. And under that, you, uh, you want to look at, uh, you know, what are your aptitudes? Aptitude is talking about uh, uh, natural abilities. What are your natural abilities? You want to look into areas of your natural abilities and see how you can function better in your natural abilities. And then you want to look into your attitude. So attitude is uh, someone described attitude as, um, uh, 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 as this. He said, he described attitude as mind paintbrush. He said, it can color any situation. And I saw that quote somewhere and I'm like, oh, that is true. It described attitude as minds, the minds, paintbrush. It can color any situation. The attitude will bring into any situation determines the color to bring from it. So that is um, one thing you want to look into. Want to commit to becoming a better version of yourself. Number one, natural ability. Number two, attitude. Number three, hard work. You are working on it. You know, it could take a little while because you know what, especially if you are in a different setting and uh, you're adjusting to the situation or adjusting to the setting, it could take a while, but you are working on it, all right? But you want to commit to becoming a better version of yourself. You could be a better wife. You could be a better husband. You could be a better person. You could be a whatever. You see, you make sure you, are, you commit yourself. That will be part of self-love as well. And number six, number six pillar of self-love, do everything we have said, everything we have mentioned, apply it to yourself first, then apply it to others. Do same to others, and it shall come back to you. And on that, I have Romans 12. What does Romans 12, 9 to 10 say? Romans 12, 9 to 10. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above, okay, I say honor one another above yourselves. So what he's saying is this now, you have known who you are, you've accepted who you are, you've engaged self-improvement, you've established life principles and boundaries, you commit to becoming a better version of yourself. Now, having applied it to yourself, apply it to other people too. Seek to know who they are. Accept people for who they are because that is who they are. They can only improve. They can only get better, but that is who they are. Accept people for who they are. You know, encourage them to self-improve. That is how you are loving people now. Love your neighbor as thyself, remember? So you are encouraging them how to self-improve. There are so many ways you can encourage them how to self-improve without, without uh, rubbing it in their face. For instance, if you see an homeless person, an hungry person, and you want to give them food, you won't say, you know you are hungry, right? And you are homeless. Okay, take this, take this, go and eat, go and eat, so, so you won't be hungry anymore. Will the person take the food from you? No. Don't say because you want to feed and, uh, uh, you want to feed an homeless, hungry person, you take away their dignity. Don't do that. The person will say, you know what, I'd rather be hungry. If there's any dignity left in me, I want to hold it than take that kind of, you know, there are ways you can, you can, you can, you can encourage people to self-improve without rubbing it, without rubbing it in their faces. When you are rubbing it in their faces, that is not love. Maybe you are trying to project something about yourself, maybe some personal engrandizement, which is not godly. Okay, that is not loving your neighbor as yourself. So now you have accepted them for who they are, and then you you encourage them to self-improve. You, 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 you seek to know their life principles and boundaries and you respect them. These are very important because respect begets respect. Even your children, your own very children, if you don't respect them, you won't get that respect from them. Respect is what you give to get. And it's, it covers, it goes around all over. So, so you want to establish life principles and boundaries. Respect their boundaries. Let them know your boundaries too so they can respect it. And then, uh, then encourage people to uh, commit to becoming better version of themselves. And when you do this, there are many ways you could do that. 
you know, if, you, if they need to go to school and you are in a position to support them, support them. If you are not in a position to support them, you can give them a word of encouragement. Do whatever is within your capacity to see that the other person is getting better. And so we will see, you will be loving your neighbor as yourself. People of God, as we conclude on this, remember, the scripture says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, love your neighbor as thyself. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Oh Lord, we just bless your holy name for the utterance you opened and for the utterance you've given. Because the Bible says the preparation of heart is of man. Utterance is of God. The utterance come from you and everyone that have heard this word will not remain the same. Oh, Lord God Almighty, may love go round in our society, in our lives, in our different levels of relationship. And life will be a better place for it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because love, even, it's a spiritual weapon. Yes. Yes. For every heart that needs extra dose of love. Receive it right now. For love, it works like even medicine for healing, for transformation. And for every heart that needs that dose of love, receive it right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we'll come your way next time. God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Bye. This is our life. 